Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's build, we are bringing back the classical but still powerful exotic named Shard of Galanor, and now it has been recently updated. Although not a huge buff, the exotic will allow users to get back 50% super energy back depending on how many hits are made by you, while also granting you super energy via throwing knights. It seems bare bones at first, but once you start to build into the super effect, it becomes a lot more potent on a larger scale. So that's what our build will be going for today. With this setup, you can get fast super ability regen in seconds, back to back super, great ad clearing options, amazing passive ability regen, and overall flexibility for when you might want to take this into end game. So let's look into how this all works. To start, you're going to want to have on your mark where precision final blows grant you and allies increased weapon handling and reload speed up to times 3. Then you want knock him down where your solo supers are enhanced. While Radiant, getting a throwing knife final blow will refund you back. As the build focuses on maximizing blade barrage as much as possible, it's pretty much a requirement to have knock him down with how simple and effective his bonuses are. Of course, swapping out on your mark is viable, but for us, faster reload speed is always a bonus. For Fragments, Ember of Ashes where you apply more scorch stacks to targets, Ember of Torture where many attacks from your abilities will grant Radiant, Ember of Imperium where solar weapons or ability final blows extend the duration of restoration and the Radiant effect, Ember of Searing where defeating scorched targets grant melee energy and creates fire sprite, and Ember of Eruption where your solar ignitions have larger radius. As a rule of thumb, you must have and keep the Ember of Torches and Serum Fragments in terms of gathering your super quite quickly. Along with Incandescent Weapon and Hands on Mod, these items alone will grant you the ability to gather, use, proc and reuse your super plus melee back to back no matter the content. Once you have these in place, your fragments afterwards will be down to you, although going with what I have benefits both our abilities and weapons overall. I would also say Ember of Sindering is also helpful if you tend to use your gambler's dodge quite a bit. This here will be helpful for those who can't reach a high strength stat so easily. For the mods and stats section, we're going to invest into Resilience, Discipline and Strength as the main key stats. For Resilience, a tier 10 will be recommended here for a higher damage reduction, but a tier 8 is just fine. At this level, we will get a 24% damage reduction which will be helpful in terms of surviving lethal hits while using our super in the air. This is also beneficial if you plan to use this in end game. For discipline, we have ours at tier 10 with a 37 second cooldown via fusion grenades. Although having a much stronger grenade would be more beneficial, the following allows me to get my grenades back faster while also feeding energy straight back into momentum transfer and bolstering detonation mods. These are important as the two stats the following mods will be supporting are quite low and don't have a lot of additional resources to help them improve further, except for strength. We also have the grenade kickstart mod to escalate the process of how much energy we can get back, so with 5 armor charges, we can get a 37.8% grenade energy back upon usage. Strength now, we have ours at tier 5 for a 1 minute 8 second cooldown via knife trick. I found that there's no point of improving the following even more since we have a lot of mods and fragments available to help escalate the energy regen. With absolution, distribution and outreach available, just from playing a game like normal will already reward you with a hefty amount of energy back just for this stat alone. This next section now covers the additional mods we are using. For armor charges, we have charge dub times 2 which is going to make sure we always have an extra charge slot on the current amount we have while stacks and stacks will escalate our charges from one stack collected to two. After that, having a harmonic siphon will help with creating auto power, while hands on will allow our melee to gather super energy much more faster as well. Lastly, you may want to have the harmonic reserves and scavenger mod, since the build will be using this heavy quite a bit. Now for weaponry, I will be using the Amit AR2 with Incandescent and Ambitious Assassin. A very good and favourable AR that players would use in both PvE and PvE content a lot because of its frame type, its most recent buff and its all round good stats. Using this for the following build allows me to take on a number of enemies easily from close to medium range engagements and with things like incandescent available to both inflict higher damage and improve your abilities, 
Its all-round flexible nature makes it a perfect weapon to use in most endgame content. You do have freedom to select weapon types here, as incandescent is the main perk we want to optimize the most within our build. Having a spare solar hand cannon, such as a potential integration, would be handy in case you need something a bit more harder hitting. It's also recommended you try and get the scatter signal fusion rifle with splice perk on it, as this can sever targets on demand. We then have Dragon's Breath, which is both ideal for the build in terms of regaining our abilities fast via Scorch Ignitions, but also being a DPS buff once bosses start to appear. It's a great weapon to have and use if you intend to play a build that focuses heavily on DPSing a boss within a short duration. For this build, it covers the needs I require for this, and the napalm effect it provides allows my build to control the field once things get too busy for me. With the recent buffs to Shadow Galanor, players will be able to quickly refund the super abilities much faster since its original release, back when shards were extremely broken back in Forsaken. Although it's not broken to that degree, we are able to improve the regen rate easily with just landing our super and then using our melee back to back via the exotic trait. Now, landing a super onto a boss or a group of targets will net you back an easy 50% super energy, and then using your throwing knife will grant us a 2.5 to 5% super energy depending on enemy rank. With how strong of a kit the hunters have when focusing on a all melee build, we can easily not only get back to back super just from using our melee only, but also get refunded just by activating knock em down effect overall. In fact, just by having knock em down, ember of serum, incandescent, and hands on mod, you can easily run this setup however you like. This is good for a number of reasons, as it means more playstyles can be expanded on if you want to use a different melee, or weapon, or just general kit. But most importantly, Everything within our kit will make sure it's inflicting the highest damage possible on our end while also regening our abilities just as designed. I would say to fully appreciate the build, you want to use this in content where there is a lot of enemies around spawning back to back like Gambit, Nightfalls and Strikes, Battlegrounds, Dungeons and even GMs once they do become available. The build covers both ad control and boss DPS in one. And honestly, I don't think this can get any more better than shown. Of course, heavy weapon can be optimized a bit more, and midi charge can also be changed. And if you don't want to use your primary fusion with slice rounds on it to make taking on bosses a fair bit easier, then you do have room to expand and explore from there. Hopefully, once GMs come out, I can do another version of the build with some improvements here and there, designed just for GMs alone. And hopefully, you'll be there to see it. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. If you want more stuff like this available, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.